cloudy. That sure is a lot of animal. It's about the best I've seen. Don't tell them our name's Barkley or the price is gonna go up. Well, uh, he's a looker, all right. I'll give you that, McGowan. Look here, son. Can't hardly buy an animal as fair as that for less. If you're aiming to dicker me down... $300 and nod of your head and you got yourself a deal. $300. We'll pay for the shipping, save you the cost. I, I might consider $325. $300, not a penny more. $300 it is, then. You got the money? In gold. All right, Rodrigo, bring him out. You got a bill of sale. A bill of... About that, I feel plumb foolish. I'm fresh out. I've been doing a lot of business since I started placing ads. Well, any piece of paper with your name on it will do just fine. No, no, no. We made a proper deal, and you're entitled to a proper receipt. Wouldn't hear of it any other way. I tell you what. I'll have my foreman, Rodrigo, ride into town. He can pick up a couple of sales forms. Well, that'd be just fine, except waiting for Rodrigo to make us late for that catalog auction we're heading for. Hmm. I tell you what, I'll have him catch up to you on the trail with it. That'll be fine with me. And it's settled? And very considerate, McGowan. My pleasure. Him for a minute. They'll have to take the old Campbell trail. Go tell Sheriff Barnes he's got a couple of customers. Yes, sir. sail by noon tomorrow. Be at the railhead in Brazos by sundown. We can ship the old boy out from there. Well, it's pushing a little bit, isn't it? What's your hurry? No, mostly selfish, I expect. I hear they got some good cooks in Brazos. Well, what's wrong with them beans? Are you going through half a dish of yours already? You got the guts to ask me that? Just give me a cup of coffee. Help ease the pain. Well, go on, I'm poor. I've been through drought and flood in five years of... Close enough for a handgun. If they're Apache, they're gonna save ammunition. If they're Apache, we wouldn't have heard them. They'll come in on both sides. Ready? Sneaking up on a man in the middle of the night, I wouldn't call that too friendly. But just that we had to be sure. Of what? That you wouldn't go to shoot. First chance you had. Now, uh, give up them guns, eh? As soon as we can see plain that you're the sheriff, 
Now you walk in real slow like and freeze your gun hand. Well now, I'm glad you're being so sensible. Be a pity if men died over so little now, wouldn't it? I trouble you for those guns now. Sheriff, I got a strong feeling you're mistaking us for somebody else. Oh, no mistake. No mistake. Now, boys, we've gone this far without any bloodshed. Let's keep it that way, huh? Now, Sheriff, I'm ordering you to surrender those weapons. Now, what is all this about? That bull you got staked out over there. Rancher named McGowan reported him stolen. Oh, he did. Well, he's lying or he's drunk or both. We paid good money oh, for you that. You paid animal. for him, did you? In gold. Oh, you got proof of that? Well, not exactly. No. No bill of sale? Well, he didn't have any on hand. Oh, come now. Man who moves as much cattle as Mr. McGowan? Well, maybe you got some other record of a deal like a back of an well, envelope. Sure hands on it. You dirty saddle tramp, you. No, no. Now, wait a minute. We've been on the trail a week, week and a half. We probably look it. But we're not tramps. We're the Barclays. Heath and Nick Barkley of Stockton, California. Your name and where you come from don't prove nothing. Now, look, we're on a cattle buying trip. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Riley, we did some business with him. I have a receipt. I him. am not interested. It's proof of what I'm saying. The one has nothing to do with the other. You can fetch up a hundred receipts if you want to. But if the name of Mr. McGowan doesn't appear on one of them, I am not interested. Rodrigo, don't fetch that bull home. Wait a minute, Rodrigo, he's McGowan's foreman. He said he would bring us the bill of sale. Was that right? Rodrigo, any truth in that? No, senor. I've never seen them before in my life. Now, I don't want to hear any more palaver out of either one of you. Get along, Rodrigo. I think you better hold it right there, Rodrigo. <laughs> You all right? I think so. Now, before anyone really gets hurt, let's go. His leg. His leg needs dressing. There'll be a doctor where you're going. Now get mounted. Get out. Just arrived, Captain. Bring them in. Two new men, Captain Ridley. If you'll sign for them, eh? Expected to read your mind, Sheriff? Oh, 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 they, they, they rustled the steer. They say the name's Barkley. Peterson. Yes, serial number 370 is open, sir. He died of the fever a while back. 597 is also open. Assign them. No, 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 wait a minute. You accuse us of stealing that bull? All right, accuse us in a court of law, we can tell our side. Peterson, I don't remember giving 370 permission to speak. No, sir. <laughs> Why he just ask a question? Prisoners do not speak without first obtaining permission. Prisoners do not argue with their superiors. Prisoners, if they wish to survive their period of confinement, think and do exactly what they are told. How's a man to know if he can speak without getting a belly full of splinters? By requesting permission in the following manner. Sir, permission to speak. I'm sorry I asked. Take them away. Wait. Permission to speak. Sir. 
permission to speak, sir. Granted. Now, when do we get a chance to tell our side? When the circuit judge comes to town, you'll be taken there under arrest, accused of your crime, and brought back here to serve your term of imprisonment. When does the judge get here? Approximately two months. Two months? Look, putting aside the fact that this whole thing is a pack of lies, even if we were guilty, we'd be entitled to stay in the regular town jail for trial. Awaiting trial in the regular town jail, you'd accomplish no useful purpose. Well, purpose? That's our right. You dare to speak about rights? What about Mr. McGowan's right to be protected against the abuse of thieves? Nobody mentioned his name. How did you know it was McGowan's livestock? Peterson! Come on. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> All present, Captain. Prepare the men for inspection. All personnel stand to for the captain's inspection. Good morning, 945. Good morning, sir. Beautiful morning, yes, sir. Nine, four, five, do you like it here? Like it here? Green fields? Trout swimming pretty in the water? All my friends around, my rocking chair, all that a man could want for. It's quite simple. He's gone into a world of his own making, a world in which he is quite happy. He does not resist, he obeys. And that is what I demand from every man here, obedience. Obedience. It's your only hope. Hope for what? To survive. Peterson. Detail. Move to the wagons. Risley. Uh, Captain Risley. The prescribed way or not at all. Permission to speak, sir. Granted. My brother, he, uh... You, you said he could see a doctor today. Well, you should have spoken up before the formation was dismissed. Now he'll just have to wait until tomorrow morning. Sweatbox. I'll make it till I see the docks tomorrow. All right, you men, quit the story. Come on, let's move. Get these rocks out of here. You 
just said tomorrow, son. There's no tomorrows here. <laughs> I'm not as loco as you boys might have thought. It's uh, just that place I go to. When being here gets to be too much. Only thing is, you know, uh, I'm liable to go there once and not be able to come back. This federal or state line? Neither. Belongs to a rancher name of McGowan. McGowan? Now it all begins to figure. His way of getting labor one tenth the price of regular hire. What little he does pay goes into Risley's pocket. Mm-hmm. And if work slows down or men die, they have to be replaced. One way or another. Didn't anyone ever break out of here? Yes. And it can work. I was here that time, too. There's something you were holding back about that time. But they didn't make it, huh? <laughs> Shut up, Billy. Shut up. There's no call for that. I wasn't hurting anybody. Not hurting anybody. Keeps talking about that break a couple of years ago. Got every man scared to throw him with me. Well, what happened then? Grizzly somehow got word. The first five men were cut down before they got to the gate. But I got it figured this time. And you two go along, there'll be enough of us to get it done. Mm -mm. I'll wait for that circuit judge. We don't want to give him any legitimate reason to keep us here. How's the leg getting worse? Sam. Here, piece of cheese I've been saving. Oh, go on, go on. With your leg hurt like that, you need all you can get to keep your strength up. Good, thanks, Billy. prison commission was made up of men instead of snakes, they'd see to it that we had food enough to live on. Commission? You mean to tell me the prison authorities have been here and seen this and have done nothing about it? We're dirt, haven't you heard? Dirt don't deserve no better. How long you been here, Billy? I don't, I don't know. Honestly, don't know. I got no years. Just hope. Hope that someday I'll walk out in green fields again. And that when I die, it'll be someplace where, where a cool breeze blows across the land like, like the smile of a pretty woman. Yeah, but that's foolish. It'll never happen. you're back, Audra. I'm going to have to be away on business for a couple of days. Since when do you need a gun to go on business? All right. It's Dick and Heath. What happened? Three days late getting back from Hayesville. I sent a telegram to a Mr. Riley over there, a cattleman they did business with. He said the last he saw them, they headed off into a county where the sheriff arrests strangers just because they're strangers. He went over there and asked a few questions. Found out the two men who fit their description have been arrested. Mother will be home from Denver this afternoon. What do I tell her? Don't tell her anything. I'll send you a telegram just as soon as I know anything at all.
Doctor? Actually, he's rather a competent physician. And sober. From what I can see, that's never. I won't trouble you anymore with my leg. Trouble? And like you cause me no trouble. Well, you're quite right. There's no excuse for a professional man being derelict in his duty. The way this prison is run, he's reacting the way any other doctor would. You're making excuses for him. <laughs> he's trash. Anybody can see that. Why do you let him stay? What reputable physician would take this job? A prison is the final reservoir for the scum of this world. And yourself included? No, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. It took me 17 years to get my own ship. 17 years. Not one black mark. Not one single reprehensible incident, not one. Honorable, distinguished service. And then, then they conspired against me, my crew. My crew. They weren't men, they were pigs. Or were they men treated like pigs? Silence. I order you be silent. What really happened, Risley? Given the power to command, you weren't able to use it? Isn't that right? I said, be silent. You said it was your men. But it was you who got thrown out of the Navy. Isn't that right? Isn't that what you're taking out on the prisoners here? I ordered you silent. And you disobeyed my orders. Peterson! Get him out of here. I want him punished. Get him out. Get him out! I don't know what it's for, but it don't matter. He interfered and it can only go worse for him. Believe me, much worse. All present, Captain. Five nine seven has been found guilty of a breach of conduct. I'll direct your attention to the administering of punishment. seem to fit that description now, don't they? There's one way to find out for sure, isn't there? Let me see them. Oh, they ain't here. He's being held down at the farm. Now, by farm, I assume you mean the road gang. Mm -hmm. When was the trial, Sheriff? Well, there wasn't any. No trial? Well, what I mean is, not yet. When do you think it might be? Well, that 
That psycho judge will be around here sooner or later, I expect. We'll get around it sometime. When men are accused of a crime, you don't get around to trying them. Well, that's the way it is around here. I'm sorry. You denied these men a trial by jury and committed them to a road gang, and you're sorry. Where are you going? I'm going to telegraph the circuit judge for a writ, releasing those men into my custody and demand an immediate trial. Then I'm riding out to the prison. And when I get there, Sheriff, you'd better be there. <laughs> Risley? I'm Captain Risley. My name is Jared Barkley. I've come here to see my brothers, Heath and Nick Barkley. Oh, yes. Well, those were the two thieves you arrested, weren't they, Sheriff? That's right, Cap. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Barkley, but their privileges have been suspended. Not permitted any visitors. Unless, of course, you have some uh, official document overruling my authority. I wasn't able to find the circuit judge, so I don't have a writ right at the moment. Well, then things will just have to remain as they are. I'm very sorry, Mr. Barkley. You had to make that long journey for nothing. Risley, I didn't take this long journey for nothing. I refer you to the Federal Code, Chapter 8, Paragraph 12, Subsection 9. Any official, federal, state, or territorial who impedes in any manner a qualified attorney in the practice of his profession is guilty of committing a crime. Punishable by fine or imprisonment or both. Now, Mr. Risley, as an attorney licensed to practice law in a number of states, this one included, I don't have to ask you to see my clients, which my brothers have just become. I have an unqualified right to see them. Well, the fact that you're an attorney does alter the situation. Naturally, sir, you have my permission to consult with your clients. Here, just a minute. Peterson, allow Mr. Barkley to visit his clients. Your gun, Mr. Barkley. Jared. He's very sick, Jared. How did it happen? For one thing, a burned leg, no doctor to attend it. They won't give him any good food so he can get his strength back, and they whipped him. All right. The circuit judge should be in Brazos by now. I'm going to ride there and bring him back here just as fast as I can. In the meantime, whatever you do, don't antagonize Risley. I'm going to have to stop breathing to guarantee that. Nick, you're going to have to ride that horse of yours into the ground to make it back here on time. I'll make it. Peterson! Your time is up, Mr. Barkley. Hang on, Heath. It'll only be a little while longer. Hang on. Yeah. Risley? Yes, Counselor. I'll be back with the circuit judge. The California Barclays. Now, how could have McGowan been so stupid as to pick them? Well, the point is he did. We weren't much smarter waiting until now to place them. I'm forgetting out of this thing while we still can, Captain. And abandon this entire operation? Never. Oh, look, these ain't saddle bums we're talking about. They're Barclays. When they talk to the judge and then after him, the prison commission, they'll be listened to. Well, they can't do much talking if they're dead. 
We could never get away with that now. Murder, no. But if they attempted a prison break? You mean force them to try? How? There are ways. Many ways. Captain. Now all we have to do is wait. Your attention. Now. It'll be hot enough today to kill a man standing still. Let alone pounding rock. Therefore, there'll be no work today. After inspection, you'll return to your quarters. Peterson, prepare them for inspection. Stand to for the captain's inspection. Button your shirt. He's making it plain. In his condition, the box will kill that boy. Arms down. He hasn't had any water. Did you say something, 370? Say he hasn't had any water. Do you wish to speak? Permission to speak, sir. Granted. He hasn't had any water. Excuse me, sir, but uh, the guards are ready to leave for town. I was wondering if you could sign this order. It takes five guards to pick up one wagon load of barbed wire. That's quite a bit of wire, sir. It will be undermanned. Very well. Provided they'll be back by morning call. Yes, sir. Now, you were saying? Captain. Please. Peterson, dismiss. You men are confined to quarters. Detail, dismissed. You can find the quarters, Barkley. chance. Take it. But what kind of a man are you? That's your brother out there and you and you don't care. Don't. Don't you ever say that to me again. We, we've got to wait for Jared to get back. All right. But while you're waiting, your brother, he could die.
Captain? I checked with Frank in town. Barkley's brother and the judge may be here sometime tonight. And Barkley still hasn't taken the bait. Bring him in here. Sit down. Aren't you going to ask me about 597? 597. Five, That's a man you have out in that sweat box. Heath Barkley, not a bunch of numbers. Aren't you going to ask me about him? Would it do any good? You're still full of your own pride, aren't you? Well, that doesn't surprise me. I know you well enough by now. We're even. I've killed enough corn pigs in my time to know enough about you. You want to kill me? I do. And given the opportunity, you'll try. I will. Well, in view of this situation, I'd say the distance between the intent and the deed may prove an impossible journey for you. I'll work it out. Oh, really? How? I don't know. Yes. Oh, yes. Patience. Patience. The way of the intelligent man. Wait until you're free, and then pick your own time. Meanwhile, of course, 597 will be dead. At this very moment, I warrant, his flesh is being burnt raw. His tongue is so swollen that it chokes him. No doubt he is gradually losing his sanity. That explains the mumbled sounds, the incoherent noise. What do you want? Tell me! What kind of a price does it take to buy you? Anything you want. Any price. But just let him out of there. There is one thing I might accept. Yes. Now, you said anything. You really care that much for him? Any price. Money? That's really not quite so rare a commodity. What's your dignity? Your precious Barclay dignity. Now, that does command the value. Now, what is the price of your brother's life? What is the only thing, the only thing that will take that key to the sweat box and give it to you? Well, it's simple, very simple. Your dignity. Will you beg? Will you beg? From a man you hate? Will you get down on your hands and knees and beg? Men don't beg. Exactly. Take the responsibility. Oh, no, wait a I minute. Take the responsibility of you getting killed. Now you're going to wait here for that judge. Yeah, but you listen. Look, I have no choice. I got to get my brother out of that box. All right. 
But you'll need help. No. I can take care of that fence. All right. All right. Understand, your men are to hold their fire until the Barclays are outside, outside the wire. There must be unmistakable evidence of an escape attempt. I better get out there with them. Trap. Why? It's a trap. That swine Risley. Those guards never left. They're waiting. The other side of the fence. All right, all right. Now look. First thing we gotta do is get Heath out of that sweat box. Get back to the hut, barricade ourselves in. And pray that Jared and the judge get here on time. Come on. I should have figured you'd be around a watch. Well, your little trap didn't work. Doesn't really matter. 
Actually, I prefer you know what you're walking into. You think I'm going to go through that fence now? Oh, you are. Oh, yes, you are. You're out of your mind. On the contrary, I'm behaving quite logically. Start walking. Keep walking. What about my brother? First you and then him. Well, now you're going to need the key. You want that judge to find his body outside the fence with mine. Stop! Thank you for correcting my oversight. Now, hand me the key. Everything's going to be all right. I brought a doctor. Who's responsible for this? That's the man there, Judge. That is, if you can call him a man. around okay, huh? Yeah. Well, I guess you'll be going home now. No, oh, well, there's going to be some changes, lots of them. For instance, right now, the, the camp has been turned over temporarily to a federal marshal. Risley, the sheriff, and McGowan will be made to answer for what they've done. And every one of your sentences is going to be reviewed. Well, uh, that's more than we could have hoped for before. Billy, you know that place you were talking about? Where the earth is rich? the breeze blows over the land like a pretty woman's smile? Well, there is such a place. And there's a job there waiting for you when you're free. You write me at this address. When it's time, and I'll come for you. Well, Lobo.
Easier riding today, ma'am. Get cooler once we get out of the flatlands. How much longer is it going to be? Just a couple of minutes. Can I take this for you? Yes, thank you very much. Ready to board, Mr. Cross? I just have Miss Branch in here first. Morning, Miss Branch. Thank you, but I can manage by myself. Oh, now we've been traveling a good many miles together. It's time we were friends, don't you think? Would you excuse me, please? You went to bed pretty early last night, didn't you? You know, next town, I gotta stay over a couple of days. Why don't you and I just plan? Why don't you just back off, Mr. Cross? I don't think the lady's interested. Let's get aboard, folks. Howdy, ma'am. You folks heading east towards uh, Stevensville? That's right. Well, I just come that way. Back there about 10 miles in those Sawtooth Mountains, had a big rock slide. A bad one. There ain't gonna be nothing but horse and foot travel through there for quite a while. What does that mean? We gotta use the old road, ma'am. Cuts north through the Black Rock. Put us in Stevensville nearly a day late. Thanks, friend. Right. Let's best get started.
country like that. You know what that's good for? Nothing. That's all. Nothing. Dad's all over dad. Sometimes I wonder why I travel these parts. Why do you travel these parts, Mr. Cross? You haven't told us. Why well, to sell death, ma'am? I travel dead country to have people get dead. Simple as that. I'm a gun salesman. Come on, just help yourself. And I loaded. Best of the line. Precision made, hair trigger, guaranteed. Guaranteed to do what, Mr. Cross? Shoot straight. Kill whatever you shoot at if your aim's good. Look mighty fine hanging that holster of yours. I carry a gun for protection, Mr. Cross. Mine'll do just fine. Ain't no gun ever made. Wasn't made to kill. Protection's just a nice way of putting it. What's your way of looking at it? Oh, may I see that, please? Uh, that, that wasn't made for ladies. Uh, the ladies carry something lighter. Smaller, easier. Now, it's not a good idea to point a gun, Miss Branson, even if it isn't loaded. Let's just say it is loaded, Mr. Cross. Right now. How do you like uh, looking death in the face, Mr. Cross? <laughs> Ma'am. Well, you talk about death real easy. Almost like it's a joke. Well, how do you like it? How do you feel? Just a slight pressure on the trigger. Ma'am. The man who killed my husband, he used one of these guns. You could be the man who sold it to him. Don't you find that amusing? I guess nobody here needs a new gun. Just put them away. I think that'd be a good idea, Mr. Cross. Yeah. I'm sorry about your husband. It's over. what it is. Just lying out there waiting. They're saying, come on. Ain't gonna hurt you. You're gonna cook you to death. trouble at all. Don't try it. Just get out nice and easy, like. We got nothing you want. First, start on your gun belt. Now throw me out! the rider this morning. Yes, sir. I was the one. Come on. Nobody gonna get hurt here, nobody. All we wanted was the money. You gonna play it stupid? Well, you ain't gonna live now, no, sir. Roper! You kill him, we'll have to kill them all. You said so yourself. Let the desert do it. It's 40 miles either way. Who's to know? Who's to say? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Who's to say?
That's it. There's nothing else in there they can use. Let's go. Give us a chance. One canteen. The next stage won't be through here for three days. Wrong, Grant. Next stage won't be through at all. That rock slide chaps told you about this morning? Wasn't any. Only rock slide was the one we arranged right here. So don't be expecting anybody to be coming along this way. Nobody has for years. Have a nice walk. such a simple thing. Gallup that way. Mitchell Mine that way. What's it gonna be? Neither as far as I can see. This heat and no water. Best of us wouldn't last a day. Especially him. You know this country. Isn't there water any place? I'm just a stage driver, man. I follow the roads. Once there were no roads. What's that supposed to mean? You tell me that death always knocks twice. Perhaps... Perhaps that is why I've been traveling through this country all these years without realizing it until just now. It's won. Oh, well, when? It's like before. Makes sense, Cross. They're what now? Seven? This time? Uh, before they was 30, three of them lived, I was one of them. I thought I was fortunate at the time. <laughs> I should have known. You mean you were out here like this once before and lived? How? Oh. The mountain. There's a small wagon train and the water was low. And there's supposed to be a pass through those mountains and a spring. But a scout, he guessed wrong. And he led them to the wrong pass, and there's no water. No spring. Over on the other side, there's another place, a uh, mining town called Salt Flats. I've heard of it. I made it there with the two of them. We got the water and brought it back. Water is no good for 27 of them people. If there was a spring, could you find the right way this time? Ma'am, them mountains he's raving about are further away than we come on the stage. He's right. You never make it. Unless, uh, unless what? Well, there was a place. I remember it was, it was almost dried up then, but it was the last place we got water. Yeah. Where was it, Cross? I don't know. Back there somewhere. Excuse me. You know, those men were no fools. They wouldn't make it out there either without any water to water those horses. Maybe. Maybe if we followed them. There are plenty of tracks. Just a minute. Do you have ammunition for these? Not a whole lot of them to waste, is there? You don't need no target practice. You never make it with or without those bullets. Excuse me.
Mr. Cross. Hey, you let me live my own life. What's left of it? My own way. I'm going with you. You go follow those tracks, ma'am. Give you something to do before you... I got something to do. You drunk. You no good rotten drunk. Let him alone. He'll come when he's ready. What about Bert? We can make a travoy out of that carpet. Let's get started. This is better than nothing. Leave her alone. It's the worst thing. I'm sorry, I should have known. It's just that I'm so thirsty. <coughs> well, he's gonna die. Why not here? He's only yeah. holding us up. Keith. You leave. It's my turn on the Travoy.
No, please. You ain't bad. Honest. Some people say it tastes like chicken. It's, uh... It's still a snake. You better. I think I'd be ill. You'll be ill if you don't. Please, ma'am. See if I can get some down, Bert. <laughs> oh. I, I remember when I was a little girl, my father used to say, take what you can get and be thankful for it. Are you thankful? How far along are you? Four months. I wish I could do or say something that would help you. Losing a husband at a time when you need him the most. It... There's nothing to say, Mrs. Barkley. My husband was killed three years ago. Oh. He's bleeding again. No, thank you. I've had mine. You go on and take it. You gotta think about your little one. meat on there for you. He's burning up. What about it, Cross? You got any ideas? Why me? I told you from the start. That... You told us there was a water hole out here somewhere. That was ten years ago. Every day, the desert changes. Sand where there wasn't any. Rock used to be a landmark. Gone. What do you want from me? <laughs> he could have died back there at the stagecoach. You could do it right here. Or you could go on out there and do it there. What difference it make to me? What's the matter with you? Are you afraid to try? Nobody's gonna... You leave me alone. alone! You hear me? Leave me alone! Some old coyote listening to herself. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was having a dream. It comes back from time to time. You know, just uh, 
Just some cattle and a few crops, but... But it was home. I was happy. Until it stopped being a home. Ma'am? To a woman, uh, her home is where her man is. And he was always there. Working and planning. Someday, he'd say. Someday. Well, it didn't happen, so it's no sense talking about it. You must have cared an awful lot. I don't remember what he looks like. I can hardly remember. Well, they say that sometimes happens. No kids around to remind you. you see him in their eyes, the way they look. I know what you're thinking. Go ahead and think it. Oh, no, ma'am. I wasn't thinking. Honestly. Woman alone has got to make out the best way she can. I'm not saying I did anything right. I guess I was... I was lost. Do you know what I mean? Oh, no, you don't. so different than the rest. He said he wanted to marry me. It was like getting born all over again. Someone to share plans with. A good life to look forward to. But then he left. And I waited until I knew it was no use. I've got a sister who lives in Stevensville. Well, at least she used to live there. I got no other place to go to. I'm just sure she's still there. We need that anymore, Charlie.
you rest a while. No, no, right. Come on. I'll be fine. I would honest. We're all tired. We all need a rest. Cross, what do you think? We headed right? I think so. If I didn't, I'd have told you. Somebody's got a ride. Let's get around him. That you'd be cleaned and sterilized and... Oh, shh, Charlie, just lie still now. Yeah. Lie still. I'm almost dead. It'll be all right. Yeah. Baby. Yes, Thank you. There, Charlie. Oh. There. Oh. What are you trying to do, woman? Burn a hole in my head. No, I'm not, but just hold still, Charlie. Let me tend to you now. Hush. Come on. Oh, just hold still. That mean, stupid, ornery, no count clear. What was he doing out here, anyhow? What was that horse doing out here? I've never seen a horse stay around any place without any... without any water. Why didn't I see that? It's Finger Rock. The wagon train. It, it, we were coming from the southeast, not this way. You see, this way, it looks different. That's why I didn't see it. That's why I didn't make it out. That, that, that is the water hole. Come on, Charlie. Get up, Charlie. Enjoy yourselves. It's all you got. You're nothing else. No?
First time I ever wanted to kiss a runaway horse. <laughs> That's the last of it. We got all that was left. this place what was it you said ten years ago that scout that was leading your wagon train he made a mistake that's right let you up into the wrong pass no spring no water all those people died except you to others. You made it out. Found the right pass. Found the spring. Made it across to Salt Flats. Get help. Only when you got back, it was too late. You got that all wrong. We never found that spring. You mean you were able to get across that desert? All that heat? With no water? How? No. You must have had water. No, we did not. Why would we get water? There's nothing between this place and Salt Flats except that spring. Which you didn't find. But you found Finger Rock. What are you saying? You have a strange hatred for this desert, Mr. Cross. That bottle you've hidden behind all these years. Bad memories. Nightmares. You watch what you say to me. You hear? Who are you, Mr. Cross? A gun salesman? I suppose so. A drunk? That's obvious. Where do you get off talking to me like years that? Ago, that was something different, wasn't it, Cross? You were something different. You were the one who made that mistake, led those people up in the mountain to die. No! You were the no. guy for that wagon train. Scout, I was that scout. Those people that I was leading, they were so in a hurry to get to Oregon. I pleaded with them. I said, go slow. Go round about. Along the Sierras. There's plenty of water there. They wouldn't listen to me. No, sir. Through here as fastest. Well, I was paying me, they said, see? If I didn't do it, they'd hire somebody else. I got them this far. Is there any more water there when we got here than when we found it just now? I didn't know those hills. I, I'd heard of a pass and a spring. I had to get them out of here. I had to guess. It was our only chance. Well, I guess we're on. When we got there, there was no spring. No water. When we took their water, I figured if I could make it to Salt Flats, I could 
Bring back plenty of water. I figured... What did you say? You took their water? Those other two men. They forced me to with a gun. You see, I was their guide. I was their scout. They, they needed me. And they threatened to kill me if I didn't. I told them that, that there was only one canteen full of water in that whole wagon train. Half. I said, just leave them half. And took the whole thing. Took all of it. Left them there to die. That was ten years ago. I never talked about it. I never mentioned it before. Want to know why? Look at you. Look at your faces. That's why. I should have let those men kill me. Okay, Cross, you were wrong once. Do you think you can hit it right this time? No, nobody's gonna make me guess wrong again. We're not making you, we're asking you. Try, just try! <laughs> mistake again. It's the wrong pass. Twenty-seven people are buried up there. We're never gonna make it any other way. It's too late. It'll be dark soon. We keep going when it's cooler. Maybe we'll get over. Nothing on the other side. Salt Flats is easy, 20 more miles. There's nothing here. After that, 20 more? Rest, Mother. Just rest. It's cooler. Yeah. It's that way most places, I reckon. When night comes. Like my place. After sundown. Crickets kicking up a storm. Frogs down by the stream. Croaking away. Big old trees. They even got grass. Everybody has to have a place to look back on. To call home. It's a need. I'd like you to think about my place. Well, 
Thank you very much, Charlie. I'd like to do that. Thank you. I think it's time we went on. It looks like a fire up there. Could be wild Shoshones. Well, maybe they're friendly. If they're not, better act like you got more than one bullet in that gun. Charlie, you stay here with the women. Cross, we may need you. Let's go. Drop it. He won't be heading for Salt Flats. And like the man said, there won't be anybody coming by. I'll go get the others. You never did say why you were traveling out here. Oh, well, Jared had some legal business in Stevensville, and he wanted to look at a new strain of cattle that's being bred there. I had some friends there, and... I don't know, I guess... I guess you could say I was on a holiday. <laughs> we better be going. You know, I... I still can't figure how... how I could have missed it before. What month did you come through here, Cross? Right in the middle of August. This is the end of June. Summer's just really starting to boil. By August, every spring in these hills will be dry. You didn't make a mistake, Cross. And you didn't guess wrong. You brought those people to the right place. You gotta figure nature, Mr. Cross. Whether it comes natural, like... like that desert, or... or human. Like us. Either way, it can bust up a person pretty bad. I'll give him a new life. Don't question it. 